love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry It's time to break up so I can make a better me Better believe in your mind cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything All it takes is some time Hello there, my name is Daniel I have got myself a new secondary mirror Check this out um, I've ordered this um, for about six months ago. This mirror is made by a German company. Um, it has a, uh, a test result with it and I'm going to prep this for, uh, for assembly on my telescope. But let's dig in the numbers, uh, what this mirror is. And uh, I should also tell you why I uh, choose to change this. It's a simple fact that my telescope, the TSN AG10, uh, is delivered with a good secondary mirror, but I did send my telescope back to Germany because it had a secondary mirror which had astigmatism in it. The mirror was changed by telescope service, uh, but I don't know anything about it. And my philosophy to get as good pictures as possible is to eliminate possible um, quality Flaws. The secondary mirror which I got from telescope service has worked fine, but is it good enough? I want to eliminate the possibility of a bad secondary, so I order a pretty good secondary. So let's dig in the numbers and see what it is, how to measure it. Um, yeah, I have a test protocol here. Um, don't know if you can see what's in it, but let's go through it, through it just a bit here. The output unit is measured in waves. This is a, a, a diagram of the uh, peak valley. Um, the peak valley is uh, the difference between the lowest and the highest spot on the mirror, represented in the 3D diagram. We also have a number saying RMS. And that means root mean squared. And what the heck is that? Well, let me explain with a simple graph. Imagine that we have a mirror here. It has a flat surface, but at some point the mirror has some highs and some lows. Okay, so this is the high spot on the mirror and this is the low spot. The peak valley number is the peak and the valley. And between those two, you get a number. In this case, the measured units is waves. And what is a wave? Well, in this case, they have measured um, at a 5.32 nanometers wavelength. So uh, it's, it's in regard to that. So this is the peak valley. So what is the RMS? Well, that's the uh, equivalent of a, a median. If you, if you flatten this curve out and take all the surface on the mirror account, so this medium line, the in-between, is the RMS. There's one figure left to, to look at, and that is what defines um, the mirror when I bought it, and that is the Strail Ratio. The Strail Ratio is a figure to measure the quality of optics. Uh, it's quite complicated math between all these numbers, and I won't go into them. And I might not be the best to explain them either. It's considered a strial ratio of uh, 0 0.8 is uh, as good as the, the sky allows. So it's uh, considered a good mirror, uh, possibly diffraction limited. A mirror with a strial ratio of 0 0.9, as in my case, is considered a really, really good mirror compared to the price you're paying. So this mirror here is about uh, 500 euros. A strial ratio of 0 0.96 is possibly considered the best you can possibly get. I don't know what those kinds of mirrors even cost, but at least right now I have this mirror with a certificate saying that this is uh, indeed a really good mirror. Um, even so, diffraction limited without the hesitation. 
and this will not be the limiting factor of my telescope. We have something more to do. Um, my old mirror was uh, uh, painted black, matte black. I don't want any reflections in my scope, so I am going to prep this mirror. And how am I going to do that? Well, I read online, there's two schools. You can either paint with a uh, fine brush, or you can use a, uh, use a uh, spray paint, uh, which I am going to do. If you do, however, uh, uh, flood it or uh, get too much paint, this kind of tissue might suck paint underneath. So when you are painting, you really need to have some, uh, some type of alcohol sitting next to you in case it gets uh, underneath or, or too much paint. Uh, the best practice is to actually paint five or six layers onto the mirror. Um, I'm also going to mask the base here because that's already black. Don't want to um, get too much paint on, on that already. After that, I'm going to uh, mount the uh, dew heater band onto this. So that is what I am going to do now. going to apply uh, ordinary silicone um, on the back side of this, not too much, just spread it out evenly and this is going on top of this, this way. There we go, um, this is it. I'm going to leave this uh, 24 hours and we are going to mount the secondary mirror on the telescope. The silicone glue has uh, uh, set during the night and uh, I'm out in my observatory with my telescope. So the first I'm going to do is to mount the uh, threaded rod, M6 rod, uh, onto the mirror. So I have the thread rod here. I'm just going to attach it to the mirror. I'm going to tighten this knot here, just like that. And now we are going to put the mirror inside and uh, push the rod uh, through from the back. Now I'm going to um, assemble the spring load tensioning here, starting off with a washer, then the spring, another washer, and then the nut here. I am tensioning the nut so that the spring is uh, almost compressed. I leave just two or three millimeters left of, uh, of movement of the spring, so I can adjust with the thumb screws here um, as hard tensioning as I possibly could so that the secondary mirror will hold its uh, collimation as good as possible. Next up is uh, run the wires down this spiderway and outside uh, the edge here.
the tape is quite flat and the uh, obstruction from the vein is um, it's just a tad thicker than the other veins but um, I laid the cable as flat as I possibly could and uh, the secondary mirror will obstruct this first end here and this end here is uh, also not a problem because the mirror sits about one and a half centimeter from uh, the edge of the tube. So let's get on with the second phase and that is to align the secondary mirror with a concentric eyepiece. As this is a three inch feather touch focuser I first need to uh, screw the three inch to the two inch adapter uh, into this and uh, I also have a a extender, 50 millimeter extender and I used extender because I want to do the adjustments uh, approximately where the focal point uh, is, where the camera chip sits. So first in with this, like this, and I will remove the 50 millimeter extender which I'm going to use later. Right now I want to use um, the concentric eyepiece and I won't use the thumb screws, I'm just going to push this um, to the to the flange here, so it's flush. I'm going to take a look on the side and I can see that the secondary is not aligned, uh, which, it's, uh, which it shouldn't be at this point. Just for illustrating purposes, I have attached my phone to a phone holder looking through the concentric eyepiece and you can clearly see the etched markings. I will also adjust the thumb screws for the secondary mirror and as I turn you can clearly see that it is uh, moving. So the point here is to get the secondary aligned so it corresponds to the etched uh, circles. The cat's eye system uh, contains with two different types of eyepieces and a center mark which looks like a <laughs> nuclear mark or something. Uh, this is the cat's eye BC XLA which is used to center the primary mirror and this uh, which has a mirror inside um, is to uh, adjust the secondary and I will start with adjusting the secondary. I have now a 50 millimeter extension here because I want to do these adjustments uh, at the focal point, same focal point as the uh, camera. So let's check this out. Okay so I see quite a few reflections in here and as I said I won't go through the the details because I've already done a video like this. But I will start with centering the secondary. Okay, there we go. I will now put the eyepiece for the primary mirror inside. Okay, I can clearly see that I need to adjust the primary mirror um, up in this direction. So I'm going to go to the back of the scope and try to adjust this screw here and see which way it goes. I think it was the right way. Just a bit more. Yeah, almost in the middle. I will now switch eyepiece again. I will take a, another look at the secondary and I will adjust the secondary once more. I'm basically just nudging the screws right now. Okay, it's in the middle. Once again, uh, the eyepiece for the primary mirror. Let's get it real close now. Dead center, okay. The primary now is uh, dead center and also the secondary. What I'm going to do now is to tighten the uh, locking screw on the back side of my telescope. So while I am tightening the lock screws, I'm keep, keeping a close eye on the if, if the primary cell is, is moving. Yeah, perfect. Attached the camera, I attached the dew shield, um, 
the mirrors are aligned. Hopefully I nailed it <laughs> this time also. Once you've done this a couple of times, it's not that hard at all. I hope this will be uh, sufficient for the first test run, um, which is going to happen in a couple of days or so. So, I really, really hope that this mirror is going to deliver uh, on point as per the uh, spec sheet. This is it for this video. If you have any questions, uh, post them below and I'll try to answer them as good as I can. You have been watching Exo Photography. My name is Daniel. Keep safe out there. Bye.